The Lord be with you. 
let us pray. Grant, we beseech thee, merciful God, that thy church, being gathered together in unity by thy Holy Spirit, may manifest thy power among all peoples, to the glory of thy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who liveth and reigneth with thee in the same Spirit, one God, world without end. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Hearken to me, you who pursue deliverance, you who seek the Lord. Look to the rock from which you were hewn, and to the quarry from which you were digged. Look to Abraham your father, and to Sarah who bore you. For when he was but one, I called him, and I blessed him and made him many. For the Lord will comfort Zion, he will comfort all her waste places, and will make her wilderness like Eden, her desert like the garden of the Lord. Joy and gladness will be found in her, thanksgiving in the voice of song. Listen to me, my people, and give ear to me, my nation. For a law will go forth from me, and my justice for a light to the peoples. My deliverance draws near speedily. My salvation has gone forth, and my arms will rule the peoples. The coastlands wait for me, and for my arm they hope. Lift up your eyes to the heavens, and look at the earth beneath. For the heavens will vanish like smoke, and the earth will wear out like a garment. And they who dwell in it will die like gnats. But my salvation will be forever, and my deliverance will never be ended. The word of the Lord. I will give thanks to you, o Lord, with my whole heart. Before the gods I will sing your praise. I will bow down toward your holy temple and praise your name. Because of your love and faithfulness. For you have glorified your name and your word above all things. When I called, you answered me. You increased my strength within me. All the kings of the earth will praise you, O Lord, when they have heard the words of your mouth. They will sing of the ways of the Lord, that great is the glory of the Lord. Though the Lord be high, he cares for the lowly, he perceives the haughty from afar. Though I walk in the midst of trouble, you keep me safe. You stretch forth your hand against the fury of my enemies. Your right hand shall save me. The Lord will make good his purpose for me. O Lord, your love endures forever. Do not abandon the work of your hand. A reading from Paul's letter to the Romans. I appeal to you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God which is your spiritual worship. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind, that you may prove what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. For by the grace given to me, I bid every one among you not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think with sober judgment, each according to the measure of faith which God has assigned him. For as in one body we have many members, 
and all the members do not have the same function, so we, though many, are one body in Christ, and individually members one of another. Having gifts that differ according to the grace given to us, let us use them. If prophecy in proportion to our faith, if service in our serving, he who teaches in his teaching, he who exhorts in his exhortation, he, contrib he who contributes in liberality, he who gives aid with zeal, he who does acts of mercy with cheerfulness. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. Now when Jesus came into the district of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, Who do men say that the Son of Man is? And they said, Some say John the Baptist, others Elijah, and others Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. He said to them, but who do you say that I am? Simon Peter replied, You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus answered him, Blessed are you, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father who is in heaven. And I tell you, you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the powers of death shall not prevail against it. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Then he strictly charged the disciples to tell no one that he was the Christ. The Gospel of the Lord. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. By the grace of God, I've been a priest now for 15 years. 15 years this month, and it's been a vocation that has brought more joy than I could ever ask for or imagine, uh, or, to be honest, more joy than I deserve. Um, I can't imagine doing anything else, and despite my occasional frustration and feeling out of step with the, the wider church, uh, from time to time, I can't imagine being anywhere else. Um, I know this is where God wants me to be. And I echo the words of Father Graham Rollins, the vicar of St. Silas in Kentish Town, who was internet famous last week when he was a part of a mini documentary that, that was been seen you know, tens of thousands of times where Father Rollins says, as a priest, I am what I do 
and I do what I am. And I pray always that his words become my own. I've been a priest for 15 years, but I've been a member of the priesthood of all believers since the day of my baptism on January 6, 1980, for the past 40 years. And you have been a member of the priesthood of all believers since the day of your baptism. Now, the ministerial priesthood has a specific purpose instituted by our Lord Jesus Christ himself at the Last Supper. The ministerial priesthood is those who are called and set apart, ordained, to offer sacrifice and to absolve. The ministerial priesthood is set apart, ordained, and called to facilitate the sacramental life of the church. Now, in the world's religions, priests are the mediators between God and man. They stand in between. We know that Jesus Christ is the only mediator between God the Father and man. But the priesthood, the ministerial priesthood, facilitates the sacramental life, which brings the grace and presence of Jesus Christ to the church, to his people, through this wonderful gift, his self-gift of the sacraments. So I offer up the sacrifice, our Lord's sacrifice of, of, his, of his passion and death on the cross in the Holy Eucharist. I absolve sinners by pronouncing the forgiveness of God, and I anoint those who are dying. Not everyone is called, and certainly not, every, not everyone should be ordained to the ministerial priesthood. I remember very early on when I was discerning this call, a very wise person told me, do anything else in the world if you can do it and be happy. If you can't, then submit to the call to the priesthood. But instead of the Holy Eucharist, you are called to, to offer up yourselves as a sacrifice to the Father. And your altar is the most portable altar that there is. And during this pandemic, we've had lots of portable altars over there in Drake Hall, behind me on the stage. Currently in public worship, we're outside on another altar. But your altar is the most portable one possible. It's your body. And you offer the sacrifice of your life in whatever you are doing in this moment. I appeal to you, brethren, St. Paul writes to the Romans, and therefore to us in today's epistle, to present yourselves, to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. Now, we're not talking about a fleshy sacrifice like a dead animal on a stone slab. We're talking about a bodily sacrifice, a one that is not metaphor, idea, or emotion. We're talking about our life, your life. Instead of vestments that you wear at the altar or a collar around your neck, you wear the cross that was given to you in baptism when you were marked as Christ's own forever and sealed by the Holy Spirit. The cross that you renew every time that you trace it upon yourself. And you offer this sacrifice in whatever you're doing at any given time, whether it's our work, our friendship, or our love, even in our corrections, we do it in such a way that honors God. That is the sacrifice that is our spiritual worship, to offer our lives, ourselves and bodies, whatever we are doing, we offer it up to the honor and glory of God. This is spiritual worship. And there is no substitute, there is no substitute for corporate worship where the people of God, the church, gathers together as we are intended to, to participate in the sacramental life, to receive the body and blood of our Lord through the Holy Eucharist. But you're also called, in season and out of season, in pandemic and out of pandemic, to offer your spiritual worship through your life, every moment of every day. You know, I doubt we think about honoring God in everything that we do, even the seemingly mundane things that we endure every day are opportunities to honor God, like how we behave when we're driving and rush hour traffic in the morning or in the evening, or how we compose the email or our activity on social media. Every moment, every act is in a sense liturgical. Every word 
is, in a sense, a kind of prayer, and that it either blesses or it curses. Every action is a sermon, either pointing to God or obscuring His very love. If we think about God and how we do honor or dishonor Him in everything that we think, say, or do, our minds will constantly think on Him, ponder Him, and be aware of Him. And if our minds are constantly thinking, pondering, and being aware of Him, they'll be transformed by Him. And then, as St. Paul says, we'll be able to discern the will of God. And that makes the Christian life intensely personal. It's never private. But it's intensely personal. There's no outsourcing of our faith. No one else can do it for us. Jesus asked his disciples, who do men, what does the world say about me? Who do they say that I am? And they gave all the appropriate responses of what the world, the people, the masses, what the zeitgeist said about Jesus. And then he turned to them and said, but what about you? Who do you say that I am? The world, however we define the world, has ideas about Jesus. He's been co-opted by just about everyone. But the real question is not who do we think Jesus is or who do we want Jesus to be, but how has he been revealed to us in our prayers? When St. Peter said to Jesus, you are the Messiah, the Son of the living God, Jesus said to him, Simon Bar-Jonah, Simon son of Jonah, flesh and blood has not revealed to this to you, but the Father in heaven has given you this revelation. If you want to know who Jesus Christ is, not who I say he is, or who someone else says he is, and certainly not what the world says that he is, offer your day to him if you really want to know who he is. Offer yourself to him each and every day. Offer your tasks to him, as simple and as silly as those might seem to be. Offer your mistakes, your successes, your wisdom, and your folly. Be mindful of Him in everything you do, and I promise you that prayer will no longer be a struggle. It will no longer be something that we forget or fumble through. Prayer will then become a need. Prayer will become an encounter. Forget about the noise, friends, the distractions, and the disingenuous flattery that comes to us always from every side. Set your mind on Jesus Christ, and then your body will follow. And then when your body follows, there your heart will be. When your whole body is offered up as spiritual worship, your life will be a living prayer, saying, you are the Messiah, the Son of the living God. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. I believe in one God.
Let us pray for the whole state of Christ's church in the world. Almighty and ever-living God, who in thy holy word has taught us to make prayers and supplications and to give thanks for all men, receive these our prayers, which we offer unto thy divine majesty, beseeching thee to inspire continually the universal church with the spirit of truth, unity, and concord, and grant that all those who do confess thy holy name may agree in the truth of thy holy word and live in unity and godly love. Give grace, O Heavenly Father, to all bishops and other ministers, that they may, both by their life and doctrine, set forth thy true and lively word, and rightly and duly administer thy holy sacraments. And to all thy people give thy heavenly grace, and especially to this congregation here present, that with meek heart and due reverence they may hear and receive thy holy word, truly serving thee in holiness and righteousness all the days of their life. We beseech thee also so to rule the hearts of those who bear the authority of government in this and every land, that they may be led to wise decisions and right actions for the welfare and peace of the world. Open, O Lord, the eyes of all people to behold thy gracious hand in all thy works, that rejoicing in thy whole creation they may honor thee with their substance and be faithful stewards of thy bounty. And we most humbly beseech thee of thy goodness, O Lord, to comfort and succor all those who in this transitory life are in trouble, sorrow, need, sickness, or any other adversity. And we also bless thy holy name for all thy servants departed this life in thy faith and fear, beseeching thee to grant them continual growth in thy love and service, and to grant us grace, so to follow the good examples of the ever-blessed Virgin Mary, blessed Timothy, and of all thy saints, that with them we may be partakers of thy heavenly kingdom. Grant these our prayers, O Father, for Jesus Christ's sake, our only mediator and advocate. Amen. Ye who do truly and earnestly repent you of your sins, and are in love and charity with your neighbors, and intend to lead a new life, following the commandments of God, and walking from henceforth in his holy ways, draw near with faith, and take this holy sacrament to your comfort, and make your humble confession to Almighty God, devoutly kneeling. Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, maker of all things, judge of all men, we acknowledge and bewail our manifold sins and wickedness, which we from time to time most grievously have committed, by thought, word, and deed, against thy divine majesty, provoking most justly thy wrath and indignation against us. We do earnestly repent, and are heartily sorry for these our misdoings, the remembrance of them is grievous unto us, the burden of them is intolerable. Have mercy upon us, have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. For thy Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may ever hereafter serve and please thee in newness of life, to the honor and glory of thy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Almighty God, who of his great mercy hath promised forgiveness of sins to all those with hearty repentance and true faith turn unto him, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and bring you to everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear what comfortable words our Lord Jesus Christ saith to all who truly turn to him. Come unto me, all ye that travail and are heavy laden, and I will refresh you. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, to the end that all that believe in him should never perish, but have everlasting life. Hear also what St. Paul saith, This is a true saying and worthy of all men to be received, that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. Hear also what St. John saith, If any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous, and he is the propitiation for our sins. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. I will magnify thee, O Lord, for thou hast set me up and hast made my foes to triumph over me. O Lord, my God, I cried unto thee.
over the sacrifice of the Mass to the glory of God, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, a special intention for all those watching this Mass. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Father Almighty. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks unto our Lord God. It is very meet, right, and our bounden duty that we should at all times and in all places give thanks unto thee. O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, Everlasting God, who by water and the Holy Spirit has made us a new people in Jesus Christ our Lord to show forth thy glory in all the world. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we, Lord, and magnify thy glorious name, evermore praising thee and saying, All glory be to thee, Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, for that thou thy tender mercy didst give thine only Son, Jesus Christ, to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption, who made there by his one oblation of himself once offered a full, perfect, and sufficient sacrifice, oblation and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world, and did institute, and in his holy gospel command us to continue, a perpetual memory of that his precious death and sacrifice until his coming again. For in the night in which he was betrayed, he took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of this, for this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for you and for many, for the remission of sins. Do this as oft as ye shall drink it, in remembrance of me. Wherefore, Lord and Heavenly Father, according to the institution of thy dearly beloved Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, we thy humble servants do celebrate and make here before thy divine majesty with these thy holy gifts which we now offer unto thee, 
the memorial thy Son hath commanded us to make, having in remembrance his blessed passion and precious death, his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, rendering unto thee most hearty thanks for the innumerable benefits procured unto us by the same. And we most humbly beseech thee, O merciful Father, to hear us, and of thy almighty goodness vouchsafe to bless and sanctify with thy word and Holy Spirit these thy gifts and creatures of bread and wine, that we, receiving them according to thy Son, our Savior Jesus Christ's holy institution, in remembrance of his death and passion, may be partakers of his most blessed body and blood. And we earnestly desire thy fatherly goodness mercifully to accept this our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, most humbly beseeching thee to grant that, by the merits and death of thy Son, Jesus Christ, and through faith in his blood, we and all thy whole church may obtain remission of our sins and all other benefits of his passion. And here we offer and present unto thee, O Lord, ourselves, our souls, and bodies, to be a reasonable, holy, and living sacrifice unto thee, humbly beseeching thee that we and all others who shall be partakers of this holy communion may worthily receive the most precious body and blood of thy Son, Jesus Christ. Be filled with thy grace and heavenly benediction and made one body with him that he may dwell in us and we in him. And although we are unworthy through our manifold sins to offer unto thee any sacrifice, yet we beseech thee to accept this our bounden duty and service, not weighing our merits, but pardoning our offenses through Jesus Christ our Lord. By whom and with whom, in the unity of the Holy Ghost, all honor and glory be unto thee. O Father Almighty, world without end, Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ hath taught us, we are bold to say, World without end. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you.
We do not presume to come to this thy table, O merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in thy manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under thy table, but thou art the same Lord whose property is always to have mercy. Grant us, therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of thy dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that our sinful bodies may be made clean by his body, and our souls washed through his most precious blood, that we may evermore dwell in him and he and us. Amen. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who taketh away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that thou shouldest come under my roof. But speak the word only, and my soul shall be healed. Lord, I am not worthy that thou shouldest come under my roof. But speak the word only, and my soul shall be healed. Lord, I am not worthy that thou shouldest come under my roof. But speak the word only, and my soul shall be healed. so shall thy barns be filled with plenty, and thy presses shall burst out with new wine.
The Lord be with you. Let us pray. We humbly beseech thee, O Lord, that like as thou ceasest not to renew us with thy heavenly sacraments, so thou wouldest not fail to bestow upon us in all things the succor of thy mercy, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, we most heartily thank Thee for that Thou dost feed us in these holy mysteries with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of Thy Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and dost assure us thereby of Thy favor and goodness towards us, that we are very members in corporate in the mystical body of Thy Son, the blessed company of all faithful people, and are also heirs through hope of Thy everlasting kingdom. And we humbly beseech Thee, O Heavenly Father, so to assist us with thy grace, that we may continue in that holy fellowship and do all such good works as thou hast prepared for us to walk in, through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with thee and the Holy Ghost be all honor and glory, world without end. Amen. The Lord be with you. The blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost be upon you and remain with you now and forever. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. The Lord be with you. The beginning of the Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John. Glory be to thee, O Lord. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was at the beginning with God. All things were made by Him, and without Him was not anything made that was made. In Him was life, and the life was the light of men. And the light shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. There was a man sent from God, whose name was John. The same came for a witness, to bear witness of the light, that all men through him might believe. He was not that light but was sent to bear witness of that light. That was the true light which lighteth every man that cometh into the world. He was in the world, and the world was made by him, and the world knew him not. He came unto his own, and his own received him not. But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name, which were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. And the word was made flesh, and dwelt among us. And we beheld his glory. The glory is of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Thanks be to God. 